So now that we have the first layer with the uh, text editor, and we have the third layer, <laughs> uh, which is the accessibility scrub, let's go back and kind of go into the middle side of this. So uh, we want input formats. And slide that away. Um, so we'll have the content filter. And you'll see you know, which roles are allowed to use this, yada, yada. Here's where things are important. HTML purifier. So HTML purifier is actually a PHP-based library um, that is not related to Drupal, but there's a really good Drupal integration module for it, obviously called HTML purifier. So if I click configure for this, now that I've told it this input filter to use it, um, and I have advanced mode on, so you get some pretty ridiculous list of options. Um, this will allow you to go through and do all kinds of things uh, to the, the content that was submitted before it's output to the screen. Uh, now it has some heavy caching going on so that you know this isn't happening every page load because it would be a little ridiculous. But for example, uh, remove empty non-breaking spaces. So you know if you somehow, uh, this, things like this start to happen when you paste from other applications or you know, have legacy, legacy content you're importing. Um, through feeds and things, you know, you might have spaces that just don't make any sense. Um, removing empty elements. So a screen reader will hit your, you know, theoretically invisible anchor link or H2 tag that's floating around that really isn't serving any purpose because it's empty. Um, that's not really a good thing. So this will automatically remove any element that's empty. Um, you know, remove spans without attributes, little things like that you can do. And so you can go through, you can define blacklists and whitelists for different things as well. So I could say, you know, allowed properties. Well, style is allowed. Um, now, if I, you know, reason not to do this, if I open up style, that basically opens up every CSS property that a user might want to apply to something. So let's say they throw a background color on a div. Well, that sounds great until the contrast is no longer um, visible to, uh, you know, someone that's colorblind or whatever. Um, now we've got an accessibility issue. So disabling the ability to put that property in there, um, which may be frustrating to the content author, most of the time we found that they don't really want to be violating these rules, they just don't know what the rules are. And so we can help enforce the rules as well as teach them through the system with that third layer in the accessibility test. Um, so you know, just I'm scrolling through here, we can get to the ones we use. So here we get into allowed attributes. So this allows you to start to create whitelists. So um, links obviously are allowed to have refs. Images are obviously allowed to have alt and SRCs. Um, you know, I allow everything to have classes. Um, TD, TH is allowed to have scope. That's important. Summary is important as well for accessibility. Um, you can see we allow iframes and then certain properties. So this also allows you to stick to W3C standards in general. Um, for valid HTML uh, because you can, you know, if someone has some weird properties in here, like potentially I would make a div that has like, they just make up markup, right? You, I mean, you can do that in spec and then you could, you know, make that actionable through jQuery or whatever. Um, that's not really a good thing to do in all situations. So uh, here's what our allowed elements are. So this is effectively our white list of things you could put through. If it doesn't meet these tags, and I'm not saying these are the final tags, these are just what I have at the moment, um, then it will be removed. So if I put blink in, <laughs> blink is not gonna come through, thank goodness. Um, core modules, this has to do with uh, some other stuff in the actual HTML uh, purifier library. Uh, you can also blacklist things. So I can say, hey, if uh, H5 and H6 are submitted, just wipe them. I don't want them ever to come through. Yes, they are valid HTML, but I don't want them to show up. Uh, you can also, you know, here's the style attribute is forbidden. So if you see that, get rid of it immediately. Don't even think about it. Um, and then you get into some things with, you know, embedding and iframes and, and different objects. So you can also have where links are allowed to point to. So, I mean, you could be very strict and say HTTPS only, you know, for a crazy example. <laughs> um, so that's kind of the way that we're, we're handling accessibility in Elms. It's kind of playing in the style sheet with uh, reusable templated areas and things, uh, passing through to this filter, which takes out things that could have negative effects. And then the third layer with the accessibility testing, which will then tell you whether or not that is machine accessible. Um, this isn't perfect, but I'm hoping it's a good start.